Well, here we go again. This week, I'm going to go over 13 questions simply because that's how it fell, and I hate breaking things up if I don't have to. So, as is no surprise, most of these questions aren't really about atheism, and they're barely about evolution, and most could be answered with a five-minute Google search. But we know that theists are ignorant. That's why they believe in imaginary friends. So, I'll do my best to take on these questions as we start to wind down the hundred questions nobody in the right mind would ever ask an atheist. How do you know that? This is part of the how and when did life begin question, and as I said before, it's not really something that can be answered in a quick YouTube video. I really have no interest in doing so anyway. I mean, I stopped engaging in creationism debates years ago because no matter how thoroughly you explain things to apologists, they're not going to pay any attention anyhow. Therefore, it isn't really worthwhile wasting my time to explain things to people who really don't care. I will recommend a book, though, one that I think spells things out in very basic and easy to understand terms. Evolution and the Myth of Creationism was written back in 1990 by Dr. Tim Barra, Professor of Evolution, Ecology, and Biology at Ohio State University. Read it. It will explain everything, even though you're not going to pay any attention. What existed before that? Well, I'm assuming you're talking about the Earth, and before life evolved on Earth, there was a lifeless Earth. Or was there something more that you wanted to know? If at one time nothing existed, how could anything exist now? Well, you'd have to define what you mean by nothing, because absolutely nothing really has no meaning in science. This is one of those things that Dan Dennett calls a deepity. It sounds profound, but it really has no meaning whatsoever. Where did the chemicals come from for life to begin? The Big Bang. Seriously, you're making this easy. Or is there something more you want to know about, because you're not really asking good questions? What are the odds of them coming together by chance to form life from non-living matter? 100%, because we know that's exactly what happened. The odds of anything that actually happened are always 100%. Wow, this is easy. Why not? Now we move on to his question on the resurrection of the dead, and he wants to know why I don't believe it. Well, it's because there's no evidence that it actually happened in reality. You're talking about a complex organism that was alive? then died, then became alive again. That has never demonstrably happened in all of recorded history, so I don't buy it. What is spontaneous generation? Why is there a comma? This is another one of those instances where he asks a question and then immediately answers it, which I find tremendously stupid. But his answer is simply wrong. Now, Science hasn't bothered with the idea of spontaneous generation since the days of Louis Pasteur, which it isn't surprising that he doesn't know that, but he claims that spontaneous generation is living cells that just magically sprang from non-living material, which simply isn't the case. But he's talking to the scientifically ignorant, who think that people magically poofed into existence with no precursors. Because they're already predisposed to think in those terms, it's not hard to convince them to believe that science holds the same views, but it doesn't. Again, go back to that book on evolution I talked about earlier, it will dispel all of these misconceptions. How is spontaneous generation significantly different from the idea of the resurrection of the dead? Well, because spontaneous generation is nonsense, and spontaneous generation, even if science paid it any mind today, doesn't deal with once living, then dead, now alive again organisms. They're two entirely different things. Has spontaneous generation ever been observed in a laboratory? Well, no, because spontaneous generation hasn't been a thing in science since the 1800s. How can this guy not know this? Or does he know it, and he's just not being honest? That wouldn't surprise me at all. What evidence do you have to support the idea of spontaneous generation? None. It's a discredited scientific idea. Nobody takes it seriously. Don't be stupid! Since spontaneous generation has never been observed in a laboratory, how can it be called a scientific fact? Well, nobody thinks it's a scientific fact except you, and you're an idiot. And this is really where I think he's being dishonest, because he says it's never been observed. Well, if it's never been observed, and we know that, then the science doesn't take it seriously, because that's how science works. 
What the fuck's wrong with this guy? Since it requires faith to believe that, how is that significantly different from religion? Well, nobody believes that. There's no faith whatsoever. Nobody in the scientific community takes the idea at all seriously. You're just being a lying asshole or an ignorant prick. Take your pick. If scientists ever were successful in producing a living cell from non-living matter, wouldn't that only serve to confirm that intelligence was necessary to produce it? This is one area where I see more than a little dishonesty from the creationist side. Although I'm not going to accuse our intrepid apologist here of intentionally being dishonest because he hasn't specifically done this. However, I do see creationists saying that evolution can't be true until we see scientists create life in a lab, but if scientists create life in a lab, then it wouldn't be proof of evolution, it would only be proof that intelligence is required to create life. You can't win. They demand things, and then use the things they demand to discredit the idea of evolution. Luckily, it doesn't matter what they demand. Evolution has been established as a fact whether they like it or not. Evolution has evidence. Creationism has none. As Stephen Jay Gould once said, a scientific truth is an assertion for which there is so much evidence it would be perverse to deny it. It is perverse to deny the scientific fact of evolution. Yet there's a lot of scientific perverts out there on the religious side who would do just that. And that's just pathetic. So that's another 13 questions down and not a whole lot to go. This is exactly why I don't take creationists and religious apologists seriously. When you look at what they're actually saying, it's clear they have no clue what the hell they're talking about. Anyone with a high school education should know that spontaneous generation is nonsense. But here we have someone taking it completely seriously, as though science never changes. Of course, that's a religious sentiment. It's not true at all of science. But as I said before, and I will say again, this apologist isn't actually writing questions to ask atheists. He's writing questions to impress the clueless theists who just don't know any better. It's dishonesty from question one. And that's all the religious can manage.